I bought the eight most popular bicycle chain lubricants, and today I'm gonna to test them in the bike shop. And just to make things interesting, I'm going to throw in some things that I found lying around the bike shop, like plain old small engine oil and a penetrating lubricant. We got a lot of lubricants to test, but only three of them are gonna podium. First test I'm going to do is a friction or wear test. And how this works is a metal cylinder is captured within this arm and it is forced to run against this metal wheel. This metal wheel is of a hardness that is greater than this metal cylinder. And so as it turns against this cylinder, it will cause wear. We'll put lubricant in this cup and it is magnetized in behind the wheel and the wheel is submerged in lubricant. The lubricant that provides the best wear protection will have the smallest wear scar. I'm also going to be watching this digital ammeter in green very closely because a low value here indicates that the motor is working less hard to overcome friction at the wheel. As I run each of these tests, I will start the timer and I'll run them for 30 seconds. And then after we have run the test, I will measure the wear scar using this caliper. The first test I'm gonna get is the worst case scenario, which is a dry test. We'll use that wear scar as the control. Let's remove the cylinder and find out how bad the damage is. Woo, that's warm. Okay, let's let that wait a minute. Okay, so what I've learned is that the wear scar on an unlubricated cylinder comes in at 8.14 millimeters. The first and most expensive lubricant I'm going to test is Dumontech Classic Original. It is $16.92 for four ounces. It says it penetrates, plates, and protects for exceptional performance. Shake well. Okay, now I'm gonna let the wheel run for a little while without any friction. Make sure that wheel is fully coated. Remove the cylinder. What we have here with the Demontech is a barely perceptible wear scar at 1.1 millimeters. In between each of these tests, I will wipe the excess off of the wheel. I will degrease it and then I will take a stone and I will clean the surface free of any lubricant. The next one I'm gonna test here is Squirt. It's a wax and water emulsion and it says it's suitable for all bikes and conditions. It is $14.95. Shake well, it does squirt. The wear scar for squirt is 6.16 millimeters. The next one I'm going to test is the White Lightning Epic Ride. It says it's the best choice for riding in variable conditions. It has some solids floating in it, so I'll make sure that I uh, shake it well. It costs $14.60 for four ounces. The wear scar for the Epic Ride comes in at 5.97 millimeters, just slightly better than the Squirt. The next one I'm gonna test is Purple Extreme, and I'm guessing by all the extremes here that it does all of these things extremely well. It says it's the most advanced bike chain lubricant and it gets 400 miles between applications. Purple Extreme costs $13.99 for four fluid ounces. Very slow to come out of the bottle. This is gonna take forever. With a 3.86 millimeter wear scar, Purple Extreme did better than Squirt and White Lightning, but still didn't beat out Dumontech. $10.70 will get you four ounces of Park Tool CL1 Synthetic Blend Chain Lube, and it doesn't make any extreme claims. This looks a lot like motor oil. The wear scar for Park Tool CL1 is 6.3 millimeters. $9.99 will get you four ounces of Muck Off Dry Lube. It says it's race quality lubricant, and this is for damp riding conditions, so it's really an all round lube. I like the screw off cap. Yeah, I like this bottle the most. <laughs> it has a pleasant smell. <laughs> The wear scar for Muck Off is 1.85 millimeters. The next one I'm testing is Rock Ride Epics All Purpose Synthetic Bike Lube. It cleans, lubes, and protects against corrosion. It is $8.97 for four ounces. That flows a lot more viscous than I expected it to looking at it in the bottle. Epix has a wear scar of 7.52 millimeters, and that is almost to the dry control. Just cleaning the wheel between different tests. 
<laughs> Next up is Rock and Roll, the King of Lubes. This is their gold lubricant. It says that it dramatically improves pedaling and shifting, and you can get four ounces of this product for $5.67. It also has some solids floating in it, so I'll make sure I shake it well. The wear scar for the King of Lubes was 4.07 millimeters. Okay, now we're down to the two that you might just find lying around your garage. This is WD-40, and for four ounces of WD-40, you'll spend $2.24. The wear scar for WD-40 comes in at a whopping 7.78 millimeters. Just plain old 10W30 dinosaur bones. It comes in at about um, 87 cents for four fluid ounces of this. Plain old engine oil allowed a wear scar of 6.73 millimeters. The winner of the wear test was Dumontek with a 1.1 millimeter wear scar, but it was followed closely behind by the Muckoff Dry Lube with a 1.85 millimeter wear scar. Now in third place, trailing behind by 2.01 millimeters with a 3.86 millimeter wear scar was Purple Extreme. <laughs> the clear loser, and I'm ashamed to admit, is WD-40. Well, I'm not ashamed to admit it's the loser. Um, I'm ashamed to admit that I've used WD-40 a lot on chains. I've learned my lesson <laughs> no more. It was slightly better than uh, just having a dry, dry run. The other one, surprisingly though, was Rock Ride Epics. That is the second worst lubricant on the wall here. And then finally, just plain 10W30 was the third worst. Now I'm gonna do the wear test with Muck Off. I really wanna see what the wear scar is going to be after letting it dry on the cylinder and the wheel. I want to see what kind of protections it's going to give in a dry state. No reservoir. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Begin. It doesn't sound bad. It's drawing low amps. All right, I am so curious. They're not bad at all for being dry. Using Muck Off as a dry lube came up with a 4.23 millimeter wear scar. I have a drill here with a carriage bolt coming out of it. On the end of the carriage bolt, I have mounted a chain ring and I have a perfectly cut length of chain. I've got this handle that I've cut off of a bottle of fork oil and I am going to place the lubricant into this little boat I've made. And then I will take the drill and I will place the chain ring into that boat. And using this marker as a guide, I am going to do one full revolution and then I will immediately place this rag on it and I will do one more revolution. After that, start the timer as I place the drill into the cardboard box and I will spin the drill at the maximum speed for 30 seconds. Now with the trigger fully depressed on this cordless drill, the revolution that this spins at is about 350 RPM, which is about three and a half times faster than an athlete's top RPM, and top cadence. I'm gonna take this chain and degrease it in between each of the tests and I will dry it off with compressed air. Our first test is Dumontech. This is Dumontech spray pattern and now it's Squirt's turn. This is Squirt Spray Pattern, and now we're testing White Lightning's Epic Ride. And here we have the Epic Ride Spray Pattern, which I think is a little bit more and a little bit wetter than Squirt. And here goes Purple Extreme. This is Purple Extreme Sling Pattern, and right now I would say it's only second to Dumont's. Okay, we're back around to Park Tool CL1. Park Tool is close to and might have taken the lead from Dumont for the most amount of sling. Okay, we're back to Muck Off Dry Lube. Muck Off Dry Lube did really well in this test, maybe just behind Epic Ride. Up next on the sling is Rock Ride Epics. Rock Ride Epics had a high degree of sling similar to Demontech and Park Tool CL1. King of Lubes. Let's see what the king can do. I 
think the King of Lubes did a little bit better than Dumontech CL1 and Rock Ride Epics. My dirty little secret, WD-40. Let's see how this goes. WD-40 doesn't appear to have a whole lot of sling, and that's surprising to me. And here's our 10th and final lubricant, plain old engine oil. Well, I didn't expect a whole lot out of plain old engine oil, but I am surprised that it did better than some of the bicycle-specific chain lubes. Now, I recognize that the sling test is a somewhat subjective test, so what I have done is I have grouped them into three different groups. The ones that I think performed poorly, the ones that I think did fairly well, and the ones that I think did the best in the test. The lubricants that I think performed poorly were Dumontech Original, Park Tool CL1, Regular Small Engine Oil, and Rock Ride Epics. They have the highest sling pattern and also they highly saturated the cardboard. Even after sitting overnight, I can still feel that they are quite greasy. The ones that I think performed fairly well were WD-40, Purple Extreme, and Rock and Roll Gold. After sitting overnight, the lubricants have penetrated deeply into the cardboard and they are not greasy to the touch. The lubricants that I think did the best in the sling test overall were White Lightning Epic Ride, Muck Off Dry Lube, and then finally Squirt. There was some penetration, and after sitting overnight, they are dry to the touch, but Squirt has a raised feel to it. It's very bumpy, and I can feel the wax in this lubricant. Now, the sling test really wasn't all that fair to the dry lubes, and so I took the dry lube that had the most residue, I guess the wettest of the dry lubes, that feels weird to say, and I loaded it on the chain, and I put it through the sling test after allowing it to dry, and none of it slung off during the sling test, and so we can assume that White Lightning's Epic Ride and Squirt would have no sling as well. A mountain bike drivetrain is an open system, and mountain bikes are operated in some of the harshest and dirtiest conditions. And so having a lubricant on your drive system that picks up and holds dirt is not a good thing at all. And so I want to know how much dirt each of these lubricants will pick up and pull into the system, and I've designed a test to figure that out. For each lubricant, I have printed two black rectangles on a sheet of water-resistant adventure paper. Using a fixed amount of lubricant, I will paint the bottom rectangle of each of the sheets with the lubricant. I will then take each sheet and I will use 30 mils by volume of this sand and I will pour the fine white sand across the rectangle evenly distributing it. After the paper is sufficiently loaded, I will drop each sheet three times from a height of two inches. And we'll see just how much is retained by the black rectangle. The first one I'm testing here is Rock Ride. I'm gonna paint it until I can see that it's just been evenly coated and that's it, starting with 10 mils. Now we bring it over here and I scoop out 30 mil of sand and just evenly distribute it across till it's well encoded and I don't see black anymore. Now we'll lift it up and drop it from a height of two inches. One, two, three times. That's how much Rock Ride Epics held. And we just throw away this paintbrush because we won't be reusing that. Next is regular 10W30 motor oil. And we drop it one, two, three. And there we have the amount of sand retained by 10W30 motor oil. Next lubricant is Park Tool CL1. One, two, three. And that's how much sand is retained by Park Tool CL1. Next lubricant, Dumond Tech. And there we have how much sand is retained by Dumond Tech. Our next lube is the king of lubes, Rock and Roll Gold. Look how runny that is. Wow, I almost got one coating after one pass. That is impressive. Now for our three drops. One, wow, that was a lot fell off the first drop. Two, and three. And that's how much sand was retained by Rock and Roll Gold, the king of lubes. Let's see how Purple Extreme performs. 10 mil. Same as the king of lubes, one pass is nearly enough to fully coat it. One, two, three. And that's how much sand Purple Extreme retained. WD-40 is so thin, I wonder how it's gonna do.
and that's how much sand WD-40 retained. We're getting into the dry lubes now with Squirt. Most of these say you should apply and let dry, but I'm actually gonna apply them like I usually apply lube, which is minutes before I get out on the trail. Well, this is very easy to see when I have a good coat. Oh, it's curling the paper. One, two, and three. And there is how much sand the Squirt retained. Muck Off is up next. This is the strangest lubricant yet. It does not want to form a, a uniform coating on this rectangle. Banana? Coconut? What am I smelling? And there's how much sand was retained by Muck Off. The last lubricant I'll be testing in the sand pit is White Lightning's Epic Ride. It's very runny like WD-40. It's taken over the whole plate. It looks like it's eating the ink. And there's how much sand was retained by White Lightning Epic Ride. I went back and I did a second batch of dry lube, this time allowing the dry lubes to dry as the manufacturer recommends. And that's how much dirt is retained by Epic Ride after you let it dry. And there's how much sand is retained by Squirt that's allowed to dry. And there's how much sand is retained by Dry Muck Off. When I actually let these dry lubes dry, they performed exceptionally well with White Lightning's Epic Ride performing the best out of all of them. The sand plus the sheet of paper it was on only weighed five and a quarter grams, with Squirt coming in at five and a half grams total. And WD-40, it hung in right there with Squirt at about five and a half grams total. The worst performers in the sand test weighed about three times as much as the best performers, with 10W30 weighing 16 and a half grams overall. And Dumontech, it didn't do much better. It weighed just under 14 grams followed by Park Tool CL1, it weighed just under 13 grams. These are sticky, sticky lubricants, and I would not recommend them if you ride in dirty conditions. For the final test, what I wanna do is I want to see how these lubricants perform under wet conditions. And so what I've done is I've cut 10 lengths of chain that are each 10 lengths long. <laughs> say that 10 times fast. I cleaned them and fully degreased them. And then I took compressed air and I blew out all the water to make sure that they were dry. And then I let them sit in the sun for a little while also to just make sure that they were entirely dry. I then took each length of chain and I fully submerged it in each respective lubricant and allowed them to sit for about 15 minutes to make sure that the lubricant could saturate fully in behind all the roller bearings. After I let each length of chain sit in the lubricant, I then removed them, I passed them through a paper towel one time, and then I laid them on another paper towel to dry. For the wet test, I've got a half gallon pump sprayer. I'm gonna fill it up to 32 ounces each time. I'm gonna pump it 50 times, and I've also marked on the nozzle exactly where the nozzle must be to make sure that I have a consistent spray pattern for every one of these tests. The pump sprayer is a foot and a half away from the chain, which is dangling from a shifter cable. For each test, I'm going to spray using the pump sprayer until it starts sputtering air, and then I'll quit. For this test, I'm gonna use a highly accurate scale that measures to one one hundredth of a gram. I will measure each length of chain before I spray them and get what their weight is. And then I'm gonna allow each length of chain to dry in the sun after they've been sprayed. I will get a final weight and I will be able to see the difference in hundreds of grams, uh, how much of the lubricant was washed away. All of these chains have now had a few hours to dry. Now let's see how much lubrication they lost in the water. The first lubricant we tested was Purple Extreme. It started out at 26.07 grams. It's now 26 grams, a loss of seven one hundredths of a gram. As I inspect it, I can also see that in its time out drying, it did rust around some of the pins. The rollers still look like they're well lubricated. The second lubricant we tested was Rock and Roll Gold. It started out at 26.1 grams. It now weighs 26.06 grams. That's a loss of four one hundredths of a gram. As I inspect the chain, there is a little less rust than Purple Extreme, and the rollers also look like they're lubricated still. Muck Off Dry Lube started out at 26.09 grams. It is now 26.06 grams, a loss of three one hundredths of a gram. 
Muckoff Dry Lube does not have any rust on the chain and it seems to be well lubricated. Dumontech started off at 26.07 grams. It is now 25.96. That's a loss of 11 tenths of a gram. That is a lot of lubricant loss. As I look at Dumontech, it does look mostly like a dry chain. There is a little bit of lubricant on the rollers. Rockride Epic started out at 26.09 grams. It now weighs 26.02 grams, a loss of 7 one hundredths of a gram. Rockride Epix has a little bit of rust on some of the pins, and overall it looks like it's lost quite a bit. White Lightning's Epic Ride started out at 26.03 grams. It now weighs 26.01 grams, a loss of two one hundredths of a gram. As I inspect the chain, this has a good bit of corrosion compared to some of the others. Park Tool CL1 started out at 26.06 grams. It now weighs 26.01. That is a loss of five one hundredths of a gram. There is corrosion around some of the links and I've seen corrosion on one of the rollers. Squirt's weight before the test was 26.13 grams. And it is now 26.11 grams, a loss of two one hundredths of a gram. As I inspect the squirt chain, I can find no corrosion anywhere. Squirt's kind of a sticky lubricant in my opinion. It, the chain resists movement at first when you, when you bend it. That's dangling straight down. You can see that the chain still keeps some of the bends. WD-40 weighed 26.07 grams before the test. Now it weighs 26.03 grams. That is a loss of four one hundredths of a gram. I'm surprised that WD-40 doesn't show much corrosion at all. I think it did a really good job at protecting the chain. In fact, I can still see it glistening on the rollers in this chain. 10W30 weighed 26.04 grams before the water. It now weighs 25.98 grams. That is a loss of six one hundredths of a gram. Also, 10W30 did exceptionally well in corrosion resistance. I don't see any corrosion on this chain and I still see some wetness in the rollers. For the wet test, the dry lubricants perform the best as expected with Squirt performing the best out of all of them. It might be a little bit stiff, but it had no corrosion on the chain and it didn't wash off. Squirt was followed closely by Muck Off and then there was White Lightning's Epic Ride. In my opinion, this is a very thin lubricant and even though it's a dry lubricant, it does wash off the chain pretty easily. I found a lot of corrosion for a lubricant that's supposed to resist water. And these are the lowest performers on the wet test with Dumont Tech performing the worst. It lost about 11 tenths of a gram and that's a lot of loss for a lubricant. There was also quite a bit of rust on the chain. Rock Ride had similar performance and appearance with some rust on the chain and about seven one hundredths of a gram lost. But I was shocked by Purple Extreme I think the most because it's a lower viscosity lubricant than these other two and it lost seven one hundredths of a gram as well. And that is a lot of loss for a lubricant that wipes pretty much clean off of a chain. Testing is complete, the results are in, and I'm ready to put three of these lubricants on the podium through process of elimination. The first two lubricants I'm going to throw out are ones that had unacceptable wear scars that were nearly that of the dry control, and those were Rock Ride Epics and WD-40. These two lubricants aren't going on my drivetrain. The next two lubricants to be eliminated performed fair to poor across all of the tests I conducted here, and those are 10W30 and Park Tool CL1. This next lubricant I really wanted to like. It performed the best in the wear test with a 1.1 millimeter wear scar. However, it performed poorly across the remainder of the tests and that's Dumont Tech. Whether it was wet, sling, or sand, it was always in the bottom three. I'm not using this lubricant on anything but an indoor bike. The final five here performed well across all of the tests with maybe a weakness here and there, but there are three here that performed very well on wear and friction and those were these three. And out of the final three, there is one that stood out above all of the rest. It excelled at wear and friction, but also at sling and the wet test and that was Muck Off Dry Lube. That is the lubricant that I am going to use on my mountain bike drivetrain from now on. And bonus, it smells like banana Laffy Taffy. It comes in a great bottle and also it's biodegradable. The final two lubricants fought neck and neck across all of the different tests. However, in the end, Rock and Roll Gold costs $5.67 and Purple Extreme costs more than double that. So Rock and Roll Gold gets the number two position and Purple Extreme comes in third. Later.